Hello everybody. Hey, uh, it's a couple days after Christmas and I'm out in the garage working on some projects. And one of them I've been neglecting on making is uh, I make some headstone markers for grave sites. And uh, I had a uncle pass away right before Christmas. And <clears throat> I'm gonna make him a headstone marker using the CNC today. And I just thought I'd take you guys along, show you my process. Okay, this is, I use VCarve Pro. <clears throat> and when I design everything, I, I design it in my basement, in my office. And then I bring everything out on a thumb drive to my laptop. And I make a job setup sheet. And that kind of shows you what it's going to look like. It's just going to be an oval marker got his name he was a ham so his ham radio license and then it's gonna have an archer he was into archery and uh, it's gonna be shooting a deer this right here the diamond tea that's the name of his uh, property that he had he had a cabin that he was building up there and I put this little ham radio tower on there because he was a ham radio operator now the material I'm going to be using is 11 inches wide, or sorry, 11 inches in Y, and my X, the length I guess is 20 inches, so I'll just make it a little bit longer than that. Three quarters of an inch thick, home will be in the center. Let's see if I can find some material first, so we'll cut it down to 11 by 20. All right, all I've got on hand is either some uh, some select pine, or I just finished a job that I made some. I just finished a job that I made some of these pocket jig. They're for a Craig jig, and you when you go to screw your projects together. You use these to clamp your projects together. But anyway, I made it out of this plywood. I'm not sure if I want to make make it out of plywood. You know, the plywood doesn't have any voids in it. I normally make these out of poplar, and I don't have any. Or the select kind, it's got these knots. See that there's one, and I don't want to run to the hardware store. This one's got a crack all the way, so I don't know if that will work. You know, I can, <clears throat> with it being oval, I'm thinking the oval part. Will come down into there so I'm going to try it with this big knot here that's what I'll do let's get it cut down it's all ready to width these are 11 inch just over 11 inch but it don't matter so I'll use the cross cut slide and uh, cut these down Okay, now I got that cut out and I got me a piece of sacrificial wood on the bottom. And so when I cut through this board, it won't cut into my, my uh, waste board. Now all I'm going to do now is just measure for center because that's where I programmed my G code and my image is off of the center. It doesn't have to be exact, but... I 
got the uh, board fastened down. Let me show you these clamps that I need to change. I made these clamps here. They also act as stops. And then I just have a, a threaded insert that I put in here to hold those down. So I got it there and there. Marked my center. Now I got to go over to the computer. And for this one, I'm going to just export my G code using a software called Easel. <coughs> Excuse me. So it just shows you here my tool paths. So my first tool, I'm going to use a fly cutter. And here's the fly cutter. I'm going to surface the top of the workpiece. And then a half inch by 60 is everything else. And then uh, end mill to cut out the periphery. Okay. Now there's been a lot of people. Oh, whoa, what was that? Oh, a puppet. <laughs> um, the, in the forums, people have been wondering how you import G code into Easel, and it's real easy. See, I don't use Easel to create anything. I just am using it to control my uh, shop, my X carve. So I just go here to File, Import G Code, Choose File, and then I save mine on a thumb drive. G Code, and Theory at Headstone, and I'm going to use the Fly Cutter. And there it is, there's my G Code. So before I do anything, I gotta go find my X zero Y zero first. So I'm just gonna unlock the machine, and I'm gonna jog it, and uh, I'll take you guys over to that point. Now, one thing I use, see this? It's a little center. I use that to find my Z X zero Y zero. A good friend of mine, he's a tool cutter, a tool cut cutter grinder. He uh, made that for me. So I'm just going to put that in. It doesn't have to be super tight. And then I'm going to move it to my X0, Y0. Let me see if I can do that without hitting you guys. I'll move it to one hundred thousandths. Let me see if I can move it over here. Switch into ten thousandths mode. Well, I could have gone to hundred still. I need to go over just a little. So that's my zero. So before I do it, I'm going to take this out and then I'm going to load my first tool before I go back to the computer. And if any of you guys think you have to have like high dollar tools, this tool is the best. I bought this off of Amazon, it was 20 bucks. I've had this for over three years and I surface all my work pieces with it. And I've had to take it into my buddy and he just surfaces this top face here on each one and he's amazed for being a Chinese cutter and for as cheap as it was on Amazon it works really well let me raise up my Z
Uh, I guess I'll plug in my probe. Okay, now it's asking me to make contact with it, the probe. And here it goes. I just I just hold it down. Setting my Z. Let me take it back over to the computer. So I just set my Z. Z probe put away. And I'll set my X0, Y0 off of that position. Now, my spindle is a little bit different than a normal X carve. I have what they call a VF variable frequency. I guess spindle. It's a water cold spindle. So the first thing I got to do is turn on my pump. That's my water pump for the coolant. And I got it down there. You can see a little radiator down there that cools the coolant. And then to turn on my spindle. And then I'll just fluctuate this RPM a little bit just to warm up those bearings we'll be somewhere around there so. okay here we go we're gonna make a car it's gonna probably make a lot of noise so I might have music on have to do a skim cut if you're v-carving or else your v-carve does not come out perfect surface this I think I told you is this wood is uneven you know it's got that bow to it and of course with the cold and hot my machine flexes too and this is the best way to make sure that this surface is perpendicular to the spindle so my next tool I'm going to use a half inch by 60 degree for my words so let me raise the spindle up a little bit Let's get that tool out of there. Now as long as I don't move the motors, I'm good to go with the same X and Y. And 
I'll go ahead and pre-plug in for get ready for the probe. And let's go upload the next G-code. Okay. So the next G-code is half inch by 60, I believe. So let's... Oh, sorry. File. Import G-code. Theory at headstone. Half inch by 60. So let's open that. And it's a big file, so you can see the rest of it. So let's go to carve. It wants to add this little G code to the beginning and end. I just say OK. Material secure probe. Let's take you over and we'll probe it. Now, when it asks me to for my X0, Y0, I'm just going to use the same X0, Y0 as before. So Z's put away. Let's turn on the spindle. Now it's going to go do the name. guys as I was cutting um, this out with the uh, eighth inch or I'm sorry the 60 degree V bit I was thinking man this is gonna take forever let me show you all of this right in through here so I stopped it and I added I went down to the basement added a clearing end mill and I'm only going to use an eighth inch end mill but that should still, there you go, yeah, that will take out a lot of this. Hopefully get this done a little bit faster. So, let's go to carve it. I'm going to get this going and uh, <clears throat> come right back to you. Okay, I just finished roughing out the uh, archer and the mount and the trees. That pass only took five minutes to do, <laughs> and it would have taken like six hours with that little V bit. So that was a good call to stop it. So I'm going to switch out the bits and start the V bit. One thing I like about this spindle is. It takes the ER 
collets. So I don't have to use adapters or anything like that. Okay, now let's redo this. Touched off. I love this probe. Use the last palm position. And off we go. Alright, the V-carve just got done. It did that little ham radio tower. I gotta sand it some more. But it did the uh, archer and the little elk or deer. So let's turn this spindle off and load the next tool which will be a, I believe a quarter inch end mill to cut out the periphery. Let me turn this off. Okay, let's load this next G code. And that's all it's doing.
perfect. So let me get this off and uh, we'll show you what it looks like. All right, there it is. I'm going to seal it, or first sand it. I'll seal it, paint it, and then I'll uh, bring it back and show you guys the finished product. Okay, now that I got this uh, this slac dry, I'm just gonna go through and spray paint just in where the images are that I want to have uh, paint in and get the cap off. Doesn't take a whole lot. Okay, we'll let that dry. Here's what it looks like. I think it turned out pretty good. And if you look at all of the V carving, everything's nice and uniform. That's the reason why I do that fly cutting. So I'm thinking this might be where I end off the video. I'm going to probably spray it again with some uh, shellac. And I wanted to do some epoxy but it's just way too cold today to pour epoxy so um <clears throat> but there it is uh, if you guys like this video uh please thumbs up this and share it or uh, if you haven't already subscribe and also um follow us on our facebook page it's williams woodworking and crafts i'll put a link down in the description and uh, we do different things, uh, embroidery, silk screening, the V-carve, laser work. Uh, just, we're always doing something different. So if you want to learn different things, please subscribe. And uh, thank you guys for watching the video today. Hope you learned something. And uh, try to stay warm out there. And we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.